What's up guys, hope you're doing well. Today we're taking a look at the top 10 MVPs in Pokemon Stadium. With four major cups to clear with different rule sets and levels, your choice of the strongest Pokemon is paramount to getting through these cups on the highest of difficulties. With 151 Pokemon usable, our lists are bound to be different. I'd love to know who are your best Pokemon? What cups do you remember the most? Without further delay, here are the top 10 MVPs, most valuable Pokemon, for getting through both rounds of all four cups in Pokemon Stadium. Much damage. Number 10, Mew. A psychic blast! Whoa, look As such a mystical, obscure, legendary Pokemon, Mew is quite the surprising start to the list, thought to be more of a myth in game for the longest time, years before the dawn of the internet, until it was finally understood how to capture him in game by following a slew of specific encounters and directions in order to trigger his appearance. While you can capture Mew in game at only level 7, he's not an eligible Pokemon anywhere aside from the level 100 Prime Cup. So you're gonna have to spend a lot of time grinding the Elite Four to get him where you need him to be. But once he's there, with all those drugs from Celadon City, and equipped with Psychic, Thunderbolt, Blizzard, and Soft Boiled for healing, he can be really strong and valuable to a team of level 100s. The final Prime Cup trainer on the highest difficulty has a Mew himself, so that should definitely tell you something. Mew is really good. He can take on any of the legendary birds with their weakness and gradually overpower just about anybody else. He's only good for one of the cups though, and he definitely can't carry you all the way across the finish line by himself, and that's why he's number 10 on the list. Is it down and out? And there goes the battle! Number 9, Arcanine. Arcanine isn't just a super strong fire Pokemon, he's considered to be the best fire type in all of Gen 1, yet you can access him earlier than you might think. It only requires a Fire Stone to evolve Growlithe, as opposed to any leveling up. So with that in mind, Arcanine is very strong and fast, so he's an excellent Pokemon in the level 15 to 20 Pika Cup. Teach this legendary Firehound the strongest fire move, Fire Blast by level 15, and he's a handful even at a low level. Unleashing that blast, a lot of the competition just won't know what hit him. On top of that, he can be taught Dig, which is excellent for taking out Electric, Rock, other fire types, and Poison, plus does major damage to a dangerous Pokemon with high special but low physical defense such as Kadabra or Alakazam. He can also be taught Dragon Rage, which does a fixed damage of 40, and that's devastating with these lower HP bars. He's just a really strong low-level Pokemon that you could even use at level 20 as the leader of your Pika Cup team. And as the best fire Pokemon, he's easily good enough to raise for the level 50 to 55 Poke Cup and could take Moltres' place on the level 100 team. He's been referred to as legendary for a reason. He really is that good. He also counters a couple of strong ice opponents like Jinx or Articuno. All that being said, he's the best generation 1 fire type he can be quite valuable for the level 15 to 20 cup, and arguably on your 50 to 55 cup too, so Arcanine is worthy of number 9 on the list. A savage hit! Number 8, Ghastly. Whoa! Whoa! Ghastly has earned this place on the list since he is a very helpful party member getting through the Petite Cup where basic Pokemon level 25 to 30 and under a certain stature come to compete. It might feel odd to see Ghastly above Mew and Arcanine, but in terms of value to the cups, on this specific stage, Ghastly can become really important. Despite being a ghost, Ghastly shines quite brightly with some strong base stats. He can be taught an excellent spread of moves like Psychic, Thunderbolt, Mega Drain, and Confuse Ray. Ghastly has excellent speed with really strong moves and the ability to confuse, these other petite Pokemon are in some trouble. With Generation 1 having Special as its own singular stat instead of being split into Special Offense and Special Defense like it did Generation 2 onward, this really tilts the scale in a big way with some of these Pokemon. And Ghastly has a strong Special. It's excellent how much coverage you have with these few moves. They're 100% accurate, and Mega Drain helps heal, which is especially nice on Ground, Rock, or Water type, and made even better if the Pokemon is caught up in Confusion. 
having a Pokemon with good survivability like this is really important for so-called perfect victories in order to stack up some continues. You basically have to shower your teams with high-powered TMs, plus maxing out on Celadon drugs, pretty much required to properly handle the hardest of fights. With strong competition out here, having a great move pool is not enough. It's one thing to have a great move pool, and another to have great moves yet still weaker than crap. Like Hitmonchan, for example, with his elemental punches. Pathetic. But then there are real champs like Ghastly that can actually do something with great moves. Ghastly is fast with a 100 special stat, the second highest of the tourney eligible Pokemon. Ghastly was kept regularly in the fight, and it can be a tricky cup to get through. The only Pokemon I leaned on even a bit more to get through the Petite Cup is... Number 7, Abra. Here's the first move. Abra doesn't have an extensive move pool, but he doesn't need one. I tried to give him moves, and it's actually kind of shocking, no pun intended, that he can't even learn Thunderbolt. As mentioned, Ghastly is second in the special stat, only to the 105 special stat of Abra. At a high level of 30, with his Psychic, it turns out he doesn't need extra moves. Abra is a beast in this tournament after getting him to level 30, beefing him up with Celadon drugs and teaching him Psychic. The reason we have Abra at level 30, unlike where we had Ghastly at level 25, with the rules of these level ranging cups, there are caps. You can't do all at the max level. Petite, for example, the total levels of three chosen Pokemon used in the same battle cannot exceed 80, which breaks down to two level 25s and one 30. You could experiment with different level combos of 26s and 27s, but for completion of the Petite Cup, raising Abra to level 30 seems like the smartest move you can make. Abra will cook so many Pokemon with his Psychic Blast, it's not even fair. Just straight up too powerful, even on some Pokemon that aren't weak to it. Worst case scenario, you're pretty much two-shotting everybody. His only knockback is that he's a glass cannon with his physical defense being so low. Strong physical moves like Mega Kick, Double Edge, or Body Slam, or Self-Destruct or Explosion can be Abra's worst nightmare, but the fact is he's so fast and powerful, any Pokemon's gonna have to hold on for dear life to get a chance to attack. Abra's superior speed ensures, unless you're paralyzed, you're going first, and it's going to be a raw blast of Psychic every single time. Abra becomes an imperative Pokemon for a victorious Petite Cup team, which is why he's worthy of number 7 on the list. Which Pokemon is coming out? Number 6, Dragonite. Dragonite, conveniently enough, evolves right at level 55, which is just early enough to be eligible for the level 50 to 55 Poke Cup. Dragonite has some solid stats across the board, so he's usually able to overpower at least one, if not two Pokemon, in every battle. If you have the TMs for it, he is also able to learn some of the best moves in the game, like Ice Beam, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, and when you're finally low on health, you can let it all fly with a vicious Hyper Beam on the way out. Overall, Dragonite has good survivability. He's resistant to multiple types like fire, grass, water, immune to ground, but his Achilles heel is getting hit with ice because it's not just super effective, it's four times as effective due to the Dragon Flying type. If you can avoid ice moves, you'll be in good position for Dragonite to get quite a bit of work done for you. He's a really important and strong add to a team of level 50 to 55. His overall strength, coverage, and speed means he's a major difference maker. He's also easily good enough to be part of a stacked level 100 team. He's a really strong anchor in the Poke Cup, so he's worthy of number 6 on the list. The crowd's excitement is building over this hot battle! Number 5, Gyarados. Ah! A hit! Gyarados, like Arcanine, is also really valuable in the level 15 to 20 Pika Cup because Magikarp evolves into Gyarados just in time at level 20. This giant sea monster is a beast of a Pokemon, but is even more valuable since he's so helpful on two different cups. 
Gyarados has significant coverage with the moves it can be taught. A leader like a fast and powerful level 20 Gyarados with Bite, Thunderbolt, Surf, and Ice Beam is doubly effective against Flying, Grass, Fire, Ground, Rock, and Water. Gyarados is a major difference maker on the 15 to 20 cup and also in the level 50 to 55 Poke Cup because of the same reasons, great stats and excellent coverage. The only trouble with Gyarados, similar to Dragonite, is he has a 4x weakness. For whatever reason, he's categorized as water and flying, so any electric move does 4 times the damage against him, which basically means instant death. Gyarados is super good, he's extremely valuable at level 20 and at 50. Gyarados with his super strong stats and a variety of moves he can learn is a major difference maker for the Pika Cup and Poke Cup, plus would even be good on the Prime Cup level too, so he's earned the number 5 spot on the list. Number 4, Lapras. Vigorous attack! A savage hit! Some might think to question the placement of Lapras over Gyarados, and I can admit it's really close, but I can assure you from plenty of battle experience, Lapras has more than earned it. Lapras is an amazing Pokemon to receive at such a young ripe level of 15, and is outstanding in the Pika Cup and Poke Cup. Lapras has excellent stats, can learn all the right moves, plus, unlike being water and flying, its second type is Ice, which means two things. Your Ice attacks are going to do that much more damage, plus with Pokemon Stadium's challenge getting pretty tough at the end with advanced, less than obvious move pools, there will definitely be Pokemon that surprise you knowing Thunderbolt. So it's nice to know that Lapras can at least survive one of those and return the favor with a blast of Ice. On top of the strong stats, Lapras has really high HP. Even though Lapras isn't the fastest, she's simply a spectacular level 15 on your Pika Cup team and regularly included in the Chosen 3 at level 50 for Poke Cup. Lapras is a major difference maker in these tournaments, plus of course one of the best Pokemon in the game would do just fine at the Prime Cup level as well, making Lapras number 4 on the list. Getting into the top 3 now, number 3, Mewtwo. Would anybody be surprised to see Mewtwo on the list? Of course not. At only number 3 though? You capture Mewtwo at level 70 in game, and let me tell you, Mewtwo destroys Prime Cup and the entire Gym Leader Tower, only sometimes needing help from a strong number 2, which is where Mew comes in. Nothing that Pokemon fans don't already know, but Mewtwo is insanely dominant, super fast, virtually always goes first unless paralyzed, your psychic is going to tear through so many Pokemon it's not even funny, and for the battles that require more long-term strategy, you can outlast them by relying on Thunder Wave and then fully recover with rest, before waking up to blast with more potent psychic waves. Attack-wise, Thunderbolt is another great move to teach him for any flying or water Pokemon, not to mention doing more against other psychic types. By tearing through all of your opponents with Psychic, plus having the option to lean on Thunder Wave and Rest, Mewtwo becomes almost impossible for your opponents to take down. His spot on the list is only limited since you can't use him in the other three cups. And although he's almost like a cheat code for Prime Cup, you could certainly make a great team without him in order to win, and on that team I think you would want to have these next two on the list. Number 2, Alakazam. What's this? Good hit. It's no surprise that this fast, dangerous psychic type, one of the strongest Generation 1 Pokemon, comes in at number 2 on the list. The reason Alakazam ranks even higher than Mewtwo is because his mighty power is even more essential in places where Mewtwo cannot help you, such as the level 50 to 55 Poke Cup. Alakazam is an incredibly important and strong Pokemon for a challenge like this. Round 2 Master Ball of Poke Cup is what I'd consider the hardest challenge in Pokemon Stadium altogether, and he's just an insane difference maker. When I was younger, on and off for years, I tried to roll with Hypno as my level 50 psychic type, and while it got me through round 1, round 2 on the later difficulties, something just had to change, and that change was Alakazam. Superior speed, superior special. Like mentioned with Abra before, he's a bit of a glass cannon with his low defense, so you want to avoid physical attacks. What's that? Major 
Major Devin. Alakazam is a key player in getting through what I consider the toughest challenge, and he can also be used on the level 15 to 20 cup, which is pretty insane to think about. All beefed up with a psychic TM, and on top of that, you can often keep him alive significantly longer with recover. As amazing and valuable as Alakazam is, you may not even need him though for the level 15 to 20 cup, based on the upcoming number one choice. Who is the most valuable Pokemon? across the most cups as the biggest difference maker? Coming in at number one, Starmie. Here it comes, Thunder! Starmie is so valuable and gives you the most bang for your buck. You could probably carry a team through the level 15 to 20 Pika Cup. That's just how dominant Starmie is at a lower level. We all remember that Misty's Starmie from the Game Boy seemed tough. Well, you're not wrong. Starmie is a really good Pokemon, and when you pull out the TMs, Starmie can learn the same few valuable moves of Gyarados and Lapras, but on top of that, Starmie is a Psychic Water type, and you know how good Psychic is, especially in Generation 1. At such a low level, Psychic, Surf, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam? I mean, who's honestly going to stand in your way at this point? Nobody, that's who. And at a higher level, you could go a different route with the moves, sacrifice one of the attacks in place of Recover, and then the opponent is really going to have a hard time taking down the brick house known as Starmie. And I'd say between Starmie and Alakazam, you could easily lead a team to be grand champions of the level 100 Prime Cup. They're honestly that strong, even against the highest level. Thanks again so much for watching guys, let me know what you think, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. The crowd's excitement is building over this hot battle!